Hello, I'm Gordon Schimmel, a staff member at the Academy of Model Aeronautics Education Department. A primary objective of the Education Department's mission is to be a resource to attract newcomers, young and old, to the opportunities of model aviation. In response to many requests for information about activities that can be used at club events, schools, and for other community outreach, we created the AMA Flight School website as a clearinghouse for the question that we get asked most often, how do I? But first, just a bit of history. The meaning of the academy in our name goes back to 1936, where AMA clubs functioned as learning communities dedicated to the promotion of science, technology, engineering, and math, long before the STEM acronym came into vogue. We shouldn't forget that model aviation is a promotional and educational tool that can be used by AMA clubs in events for the general public to reach schools with classroom and after-school programs, as well as other community groups. We all know about the excitement of radio-controlled flight, but AMA's education department also uses simple, quick-build, inexpensive models to make it easy for club members to interest others in model aviation. Thanks to model aviation, everybody becomes an aviator. How does this happen? Simple free flight models have been used as a great way to engage newcomers in the fun of flight. These activities may help a visitor to a club event decide to join the club and share in the adventure of model aviation. And most important, these activities make everyone a pilot and everyone leaves with a model of their own. So let's get started with this installment of AMA Flight School's How Do I? Today we are going to build one of Tom Sanders' designs for a basic catapult launch glider. Tom shows us how to mass produce gliders for a large group using templates for all of the pieces. He'll show us how to sand the trailing edges so the glider can be trimmed properly, how to add polyhedral to the wing, he'll show us how to assemble the glider, how to secure clay to the nose, and finally he demonstrates proper launch technique. Three, two, one, launch! Tom Sanders is a longtime member of the AMA Education Committee, an avid free flight modeler who for more than a decade has been the creator of several free flight competitions for the nationally known Science Olympiad program. So let's get started with today's installment of AMA Flight School's How Do I? In a previous segment, Tom offered a number of tips on how to modify an inexpensive glider that many clubs give away at public events. Today we're going to feature one of Tom's design that is a step up, a project that a club can offer during an after-school club or as an activity for community-based summer camp. So welcome, Tom. Thanks, Gordon. This time we have a glider that's totally handmade. We take raw materials, balsa sheet and stick, and we're going to create all these parts to go in this glider. It's a great opportunity for anybody, young or old, to take ownership of their design. Let's get started. We're going to use 1 16th thick balsa for the wings. We'll use 1 32nd balsa for the tail assembly. And we're going to use a stick that's approximately 3 seconds by a quarter. This will be our stick fuselage. The way this is designed is if you have a club that's going to be manufacturing a number of these gliders, all these dimensions fall within the yield of a typical size sheet of 36 inches long. That way a club can get the most yield out of the investment they're making into this activity. In this case, I've made myself some templates. and This is probably a good idea for everybody to do. The reason is, it's a lot easier to run a pen around this template and make the initial marks that are shown here right on the template a lot easier to mass produce the parts so we can get through the process faster. First thing we're going to do is lay the template on top here. And I'm going to quickly draw the outline. Note that I have a dihedral mark that I want to utilize later. So we pre-mark the wood accordingly. We're 
got it. We'll take our straight edge, just so we know these references. Draw these lines here, here. So we've got the outline for the wing, and now we can move on to our stabilizer. Again, we just pen out the outline here. This is really nice when you're doing a mass production event. You can make these ahead of time. You can make them right in front of the kids. You can do it like a, well, it's a, buff, a buffet line, but we're using production techniques to make it happen. Okay, Gordon, now we're gonna get to not only the stabilizer, but doing the outline for the fin. This is also critical. This is a common problem I see in competition with students. If you look at this glider here, note how the grain is perpendicular to the fuselage. Many times we see the grain parallel. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what that would cause, what kind of problem that would cause? It'd break very easily. It'd break very easily. So whenever a glider is designed, it's paramount that this grain be perpendicular, just like it is with the stabilizer and the wing. Okay, let's talk about the fuselage. It's gonna to need to have some attachment for the rubber band. We're gonna use the same stick size that we used for the fuselage, and we're gonna glue it to the front. Simple process. Just grab our glue. Just a small bead. These are called shark's teeth. Take off some of the excess. Take our accelerator. Just a drop is all that's needed. Now, when it comes to glider design, especially when it's a rubber launch glider, I find it's important to have a good amount of dimension. In essence, there's lever arms here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have the wing located at an at a appropriate place as a lever arm. And what I like to do is take a standard dimension. This is about 12 inches. I like to break these up into approximately five units of measurement or four. In this case, I'm going to put it at three inches for the leading edge of the wing. That's where the leading edge will go eventually. And I'll put a mark at the trailing edge. The reason for that is this tells me where my glue is going to go when I go to assemble. The same is true for the tail. Think about the grip that you're going to need. I have big fingers, so I need a little more grip. Mm -hmm. A young person may not need to have that much grip back there. But basically, my stabilizer is going to go right on top between those two lines. The fin eventually will fit right on top of that. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're going to have dihedral, but this is going to be what essentially is a polyhedral design. Simple dihedral would be a V head on just from the center. But for extra stability, we're going to add dihedral tips to both tips on, on both wings. And much like we used as a technique previously, we are going to take a fine point ballpoint pen and take a number of passes through. This is a very nice way of fracturing the balsa so that we can create what amounts to a hinge. We're gonna glue that seam at that hinge point to create our dihedral. For those who want to have an airfoil, I have two tools here that are very nice to use. And essentially, these are emery boards. I discovered these while shopping with my wife one day. Great, because they have, it's a hard board, it has different size grit to them, and are perfect for sanding in that trailing edge taper that makes an airfoil function. Now, is there any particular angle that you uh, sand at? How do you do that? How do you determine what's appropriate? Well, actually, you just want to make sure that the trailing edge is very thin. 
The leading edge also is tapered as well. It doesn't have to be near as much because remember, this edge of the wing will make hit an obstruction first. And we'd not, like not to have that chipped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the trailing edge, it doesn't hurt to have it very thin. In fact, if I can look through this and see a translucency, almost to the point where I could read through it, that tells me that's getting thin enough. We don't have to do that for this initial one. But that's, that's something if somebody chooses to, they can make that extra bit of performance happen. Mm -hmm. Again, like we did previously, we're going to add some dihedral to the tips. And all we need to use is a cap, run a bead. The famous LAR method looks about right. Looks about right. A little bit of accelerator. By the way, if you ever do use a system like this, do your best not to actually touch the glue with the tip, because it'll actually glue the tip shut. So we have one side that's glued. And it's best to look at this, give it a good eyeball inspection, place your jig or fixture in place, glue the seam, and accelerate. For the center one, basically the same thing happens. We're going to place our little fixture jig underneath the wing tip, right in board of that seam. So it doesn't really get too much dihedral. Doesn't need it. If it's too much, it'll actually function like an arrow. When it comes to gliders, it's important that it has just enough stability. What we want is it to have stability at high speed, because that's what happens when it launches. But what we also want is it to transition into low speed and come down slowly. For it to have that capability of transitioning, having too much dihedral prevent that from happening. I see. Now, we go back to where our glue lines are, put a bead of glue in place, and if you want, a little bit of accelerator, a little bit of accelerator right mm -hmm. on that seam, and using that center line for my reference, I place the wing on the fuselage. Nicely done. Essentially the same is true for a stabilizer. Using that center line as my reference, just a couple drops of accelerator in place. And it's on. Again, using that same line we add glue to the bottom of the fin. Now it's important, we don't, glue, we don't put the glue on like this. We actually put it where the tail is semi-upright and you add the glue there. Otherwise, it's such a thin surface, it'll run down the fin. So essentially, we have what amounts to most of the glider is finished. There's one added piece though. We have to balance the glider. It has to be balanced so that when it's in flight, it's stable. For us to have enough ballast on the nose, typically what we use is clay. We need to put some clay on the nose. There's two things it does. It helps us ballast the nose so it balances. The other bad benefit is that if we're flying indoors and we impact the floor, it's nice to have a little bit of cushion right in the front. Exactly. It absorbs some of that energy. The way we do this, we add a little glue to the nose, and we take essentially what amounts to a pea-sized amount of clay, and we attach it to the nose. And we can drop just a little bit of accelerator on that. 
Along the edge. Along the edge. Now what this does, clay has oil in it. And it has a very difficult time sticking to, to balsa wood. So what we're actually doing is gluing on a surface that's permanent there. So we can add or remove this clay as we trim fly the aircraft. So you can change out various weights to make it balance Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Right. Trim it. And this will be one of the variables when somebody's doing a scientific uh, process mm -hmm. on this, especially like in Science Olympiad. Mm -hmm. This would be one of the factors or var variables that they would be documenting along the way. We'll just put a drop of glue like we did on the other airplanes. Just run it down on that open grain. Which seals it up, makes seals it a little it up. Right. stiffer. There we go. Perfect. That should do it. We should be ready to fly. Now all we do is take our launcher with our 1 16th rubber. We hook it on here like that. And we're ready to go fly. Let's go fly. Three, two, one, launch. <laughs> Are we done with that one? <laughs> the pilot's fine. He's just sitting on top of a roof right now. Thanks for joining us. You can find other great activities and projects on this Flight School website. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact us at modelaircraft.org. I'm Gordon Schimmel for The Academy of Model Aeronautics. Learn. Grow. Fly with us.